Having a video projector in your van could be viewed as somewhat of a luxury. Whether it's your only form of entertainment or something you want to watch movies on inside or outside of the van. Well today we're going to put three projectors ranging from £50 to £150 through their paces. So stick with us to see how they compare. Don't forget to check out our other videos on everything camper van and motorhome related, from solar to water, heating to gadgets, tyres to trips. If you like this video, please do hit the thumbs up. It really does help me to know what you like, and you can ask any questions or give feedback in the comments. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos, please hit the subscribe button and clicking the bell will give you a notification when a new video goes live. Finally, if you do decide to hit the thumbs down, it would be great if you could also leave a comment so I know what you didn't like. We have found having a video projector with us in the van is a great experience for watching sports and movies, but with a huge range of projectors to pick from, which are best? Here we've got three projectors that we've put through their paces, so let's take a closer look at each of them. First we have the unbranded J9 projector, which retails between £30 and £50. We got this one from Banggood for £36. As you can see it's a neat little unit which is powered by USB or 12 volts. It has an SD card and ports for AV in, audio out, HDMI and USB. The focus is chunky and easy to use and it has a tripod mount screw on the bottom. The remote is pretty chunky too for the size of the unit, but it can also be operated by buttons on the projector itself. Next we have the LFS 2021 model. Retailing at between £70 and £100, we picked this one up from Amazon. This is a much bigger unit, it has all the same connections as the J9, plus it has VGA, direct Wi-Fi and screen mirroring connections. It also has a tripod screw mounting and uses the same style of remote. But this feels more in proportion for this size of unit. Again it also has buttons on the unit that can be used to operate it. Now this unit can only be powered by 240 volt mains, so if off grid you would have to run it from an inverter. Finally, the most expensive on test is the ViewSonic M1 Mini at between £125 and £160. We also got this one from Amazon. This is a tiny unit and is well designed for portability with its integrated lens cover and stand. The focus wheel is quite small on this one and other than an on-off switch, there are no controls on the unit itself, so everything has to be done from the neat little remote control. It is USB powered, but also has its own internal battery, which is good for around two hours of play. When it comes to inputs, this one only has USB and HDMI. You've probably noticed that none of these are smart devices. I'm an advocate of not buying a device with built-in smart, which may seem a little strange. But my reasoning is I'd rather the money I'm spending on a projector to be providing the best picture and audio for the cost rather than smart features. With smart features built in, yes it gives you a nice all-in-one unit, but you're reliant on the hardware manufacturer to keep up with the firmware of the device. So it's up to date with new streaming services or new app versions. I prefer to be able to select the best projector for the money I want to spend and then the smart media device I choose. I choose a Fire Stick as we always use these at home as well and it's as simple as plugging this into any of the projectors to use it. This also gives us the further advantage of being able to connect the Fire Stick to a Bluetooth speaker for sound rather than relying on the projector's inbuilt speaker because as you'll see later these can leave a lot to be desired. Let's take a look how the sizes of the units compare. For all three projectors the setup is very similar and easy. With the first two it's just a case of plugging them in and switching on. With the ViewSonic, as we're using the internal battery, it's just a case of switching it on. Focusing on all three is easy, if slightly fiddlier on the ViewSonic due to the small focus wheel. We'll be doing all our tests with the projectors pointing straight at the wall, but if you wanted to change the elevation of the picture, you would need to alter what is known as keystone to make the image square. 
Unfortunately, the J9 doesn't have a keystone adjustment to do this. The LFAS does have both an optical and a digital keystone adjustment, but they need to be done manually. The ViewSonic also has digital keystone adjustment, but goes one step further as it can do it automatically, with the projector correcting the image itself, as you can see here. Different projectors have different throw distances. This is how far away from the screen they have to be for a certain sized picture. When you're trying to get a bigger picture in the limited space of a van, a shorter throw projector is generally better. So let's take a look how they compare. So to project an image that's 70 inches diagonally, the J9 has to be 280 centimeters away, the LFS has to be 220 centimeters, and the ViewSonic only 180 centimeters. When you're watching a movie in a small space, the noise of the fan is quite important. So let's see how these compare. If you want to be able to view movies during the day without blacking out windows, you're going to need the projector to be bright. So let's take a look at how they compare. So the J9 is pretty dim, as you can see. So not really usable during the day. However, the Elifas and the ViewSonic are pretty much the same brightness. Now let's take a look at what this looks like playing back a video. So as expected, the J9 isn't really usable, but the other two do a pretty good job. To get a better idea of the quality, let's take a look at them in a dark room. Now in comparison the J9 does look dim here, but actually it is viewable, it's just that the other two really outshine it. What you can notice if you look carefully is the LFS has a bit of stutter to it, whereas the ViewSonic is a nice smooth motion. I also prefer the colour reproduction and the contrast that the ViewSonic has. Now to really get to the nitty gritty, let's look at a zoomed in image from each of the projectors. As you can see, the pixels on the J9 are clearly visible. On the Elifas, you can see a bit of stepping where the pixels are starting to come in, but on the ViewSonic, you've got a reasonably smooth line showing the benefit of having that higher resolution. I also ran some more in-depth tests across the three projectors to check for cropping, colour reproduction, contrast and motion blur. Across the three, the ViewSonic definitely gave the more superior images. It's worth noting the rolling line you see on some of the images is an artefact introduced from the camera taking the video and isn't visible to the human eye on the screen. In our final test, let's have a listen to the audio quality direct from the projectors. Side six.
situated about a mile and a half from both Torva and So with the J9 its key attribute is its price and to be honest for the price it's not bad. You really shouldn't expect anything amazing for less than £50. It is a bit of a novelty and you certainly wouldn't be using it for a large screen but to pop something on the wall for a bit of fun it's okay. The Elephas is a pretty good projector, only really let down by its size and having to be powered by mains. Its image quality is acceptable but not perfect. Finally, in my opinion, the ViewSonic is a great little projector that's portable with a good quality picture and considering its size, pretty good audio. Yes, it's more expensive, but the quality does show. It's let down slightly by its lack of audio out, but as I said, we get around this by using the Bluetooth function from our Fire Stick. There is a plus model for a bit more money that adds Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to the unit. Here's my summary of the three projectors. Do please ask any questions in the comments and you can find links to all of them in the video notes. Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing.